tucked away on the south side of Vincentia is a small gem called Greenfields Beach, which is part of Jervis Bay National Park. In 1942, Colin Greenfield acquired a lease on the locality from the Department of Crown Lands. He built a house there and lived there for nearly 30 years. Eventually, due to poor health, he moved to Huskisson, swapping houses with the Vost family in 1970. The Vosts set about rebuilding the house, which was being destroyed by termites. But in 1977, the New South Wales Coastal Protection Scheme came into force and the Vosts had to leave. The locality now is called Greenfields Beach and became part of Jervis Bay National Park, which was gazetted in 1995. The National Parks and Wildlife Service set about rehabilitating the area with quality public use facilities and upgrading the walking tracks. The walking tracks are very popular and take the visitors through a remarkable range of habitats. A small creek runs down from the hills into the bay at the beach and the valley along the creek is a tangle of vegetation with ferns and extensive areas of sword grass. A bridge crosses the creek as you leave the picnic area heading towards Himes Beach about a kilometre of easy walking to the south. After about 300 metres, another track branches off from this one and takes you up the hill away from the taller forest habitat through a scribbly gum woodland where the wattle birds might find flowering banksias and an abundance of insects and nectar. The track actually loops around through different woodland and forest areas and takes you back to the picnic area. As you descend down the lower slopes, trees get progressively more robust and the thick, shrubby understory provides a haven for many small birds. You will no doubt hear the grey butcher bird and you could be lucky enough to see one. Butcher birds have a very melodious call which carries a long way in the forest as does the call of the olive-backed oriole. Orioles blend very well into the treetops where they forage amongst the leafy branches. Consequently, you are more likely to hear them but not see them. Their cup-shaped nest is always near the end of a leafy branch but can be within 10 metres of the ground. When the male is off finding food, he frequently calls to reassure the female sitting on the nest and she answers with a quiet call of her own. When she goes off to find food, the male may stand guard near the nest keeping an eye out for intruders. Another common bird in the area is the Lewin honey eater. Lewins, like many other medium-sized birds, are quite omnivorous 
supplementing nectar with fruit and insects, and they are not averse to raiding local domestic fruit trees like figs. Domestic gardens, too, are often a great source of nectar-bearing flowers, particularly Grevillea cultivars. Down on the forest floor, there are more relatively open areas with bracken fern and leaf litter. Tall forest trees overhead keep the valley bottoms fairly moist, so a particularly common and friendly little bird is the yellow robin. If you sit quite still, they will often drop down to within a couple of feet of you to catch an insect before quickly fluttering back to perch on the side of a tree. Their eyesight is very keen and they can detect prey when you don't see anything. In places where the soil is shallow and drier, scribbly gum woodland forms and this often provides good nesting hollows for parrots. Of course such hollows are also found in other old forest trees, but scribblies provide them more often. An ideal hollow generally provides a small entrance, where predators like kookaburras and goannas find entry too difficult. Rainbow lorikeets are primarily nectar feeders, their tongue being fringed like a brush. But they also eat blossoms and soft acacia seeds and will also eat soft fruit. Drier habitats also carry more heath plants like shrubby, grevilleas and epacris, which is where you are most likely to see the small honey eaters like the eastern spinebill and New Holland honey eaters.
Small parties of the tiny omnivorous silverei can occasionally be seen at greenfields, but you have to be satisfied with very brief glimpses. They feed primarily on tiny insects and nectar, but they also favour small berries when they are available. Lantana berries and blackberries are welcomed by these birds, if not by us. Another tiny forager of the area is the brown thornbill. It is so difficult to photograph that I resorted to making this animation. Thornbills generally don't stop still long enough or close enough for you to focus the camera, and most of the time they are hidden amongst the leaves. If you are lucky enough to find the yellow robin at home, try to remain perfectly still and she will freeze on the nest as if to say, you can't see me, I'm not even here. To get to Greenfields from the highway at South Nara, take the Jervis Bay Road and proceed to Vincentia Turnoff at the roundabout. Proceed to Vincentia Shopping Centre and at the roundabout proceed straight through on Elizabeth Drive. Follow the drive until you see Sutton Street, Frederick Street intersection and proceed straight through. Then look for the sign directing to Greenfields Beach.